Welcome to this Stateless Codecast. This is episode number 14 in our series, Getting Started with Rails 7. And we are, in this episode, going to be taking a look at the refactoring section of the Getting Started with Rails 7 guide. Uh, to this point, we have gone through and generated our blog application. We started with a Hello World style articles controller. We made that the root path of our application. And then we went in and filled in the seven RESTful actions for that article's resource, index, show, new, create, edit, update, and destroy. Uh, we, for the destroy action, we had a little bit of difficulty getting uh, that working with the, um, the defaults for Rails 7 with Turbo and without Rails UJS. So if you want to check out episode 10, we, uh, we go in that and we, the, the published version of the guide, which we're showing here for version 7.0.0, doesn't have the correct way to get that to work with confirmation and everything. So uh, we did that. And then we took a, uh, a little detour for episode 11, where we went and used the Rails generate scaffold to generate a model called post that was roughly equivalent to what we have with articles, but got kind of 10 episodes worth of development done in one episode there to show how efficient and productive you can be with the Rails scaffold generator. And then the past couple episodes, we've been going and creating article comments for our article. So we go in and add the, um, the comment model, we add a has many relation with the men, dependent destroy on article, uh, has many comments, and then our, a comment belongs to an article. And then in our previous episode, we went in and actually in created the, and used the form allowed for the creation of those comments on our article. And now we here we are at refactoring. And we've been using a test-driven approach throughout all of this. So the way that it, the guide doesn't do this, but I always recommend doing it. The uh, the way that, that a test-driven approach works is you, you write a failing test, you kind of do the bare minimum to make that test pass only with the code uh, that you're adding in. So the test should uh, fail without your change. It should pass only with your change. And then, um, that allows you to refactor afterwards. And this section here is going to be on refactoring. And because we have a test suite existing, we can refactor with confidence that in the event that we go in and inadvertently break something, we're going to have, hopefully, if we've written our test properly, a test fail showing that we, we broke something or uh, made something not work as intended by the changes that we've introduced. So. Uh, and refactoring is very important in terms of ma making your, your application maintainable and adaptable to change. So each line of code you write is a liability, not an asset. And so you want to be as expressive as you can, as eloquent as you can, and um, allow your functionality to be written with the least amount of code possible while still being um, expressive and having good variable names and uh, making your code readable and maintainable. So we're going to get started here. We've already done this a couple times with the form and then in the scaffold generator we did a version we did of the post. It kind of came prepackaged with some uh, some partials in place. So we will go into our application and we'll go to views comments and here right now we don't have any view files yet for comments but we'll add in a file called comment.html.erb and as noted before so we'll have we'll take a look at what our current show action has here so in articles we've got article comments each do comment and we're going to just take what we had there um, I'm keeping the classes 
there, but this is essentially the same thing that we had other than the addition of the class attribute. Take this, put it in comment.html.erb, save comment.html.erb, and then instead of in the show action here, now we're going to render the instance variable article dot comments. And Rails infers that you want the, the comment partial there from the relationship that you've got on article with has many comments. So it's going to look um, by default using Rails convention over configuration for a partial called underscore comment.html.erb. If you had a different partial you wanted to render there, let's say you had one for your comments show and one for your comments index or something like that, that you could specify your your, uh, your partial in this render um, as we'll get to when we do the form. So we will go in and make this addition to our show.html.erb. Save it, and we should you can see I refresh it, and we've got our article and our article dot comments. And that's showing up in our server log there, and we should still have all of our tests passing. And they do. So we can check that off. And it can say, you can see the guide and talks through this. It now uh, renders the, com the comment partial and then the um, it iterates through each one, and then because the um, the way Rails Active Support works, it converts that into the local variable that um, winds up being the uh, the singular version of that, and it, and it just works out of the box. So we're going to now do the same thing with the form. So we've got our form in the show.html.erb and so we'll create in comments here new file form.html.erb we will take this and put this in our comments form.html.erb and I think the the guide here has a a bug in it. So as noted earlier in the um, in the guide, when you're doing a partial, you should be using um, local variables rather than instance variables. So we'll make that that change here in our in our partial. So it'll be article and article dot comments dot build. And then this will, um, unless we specify that local variable, it's going to fail, but we'll, um, we 
we haven't changed show yet, so this should still be working. But if we go in and just change it the way that the guide shows us to change it, render comments form, this is going to make our test fail. Because our article local variable has not been defined, as we can see there. So all we have to do to make that work is article add article and we're back to passing and our form partial still works, or the partial there still works. Yeah, that's, that's inconsistent with what we had up earlier. So if you look at the guide back where we're doing the updating an article section here. You can see that we do in that form version, we replace the occurrences of the instance variable article with the local variable article, and then we render that with the local variable set to the instance variable. And um, that's the, the best practice for a Rails partial, and we're going to apply that even though the, the guide isn't saying to do that. Um, that that's how you should do, do that whenever you've got a partial is use local variables rather than instance variables so that you're not tightly coupled to a particular instance existing. Like, for example, um, you could have, let's say later on you wanted a polymorphic model and you had commentable or something like that, then you could do the um, form for commentable comment, but you could have in some cases, commentable it could be an article, it could be a podcast episode, it could be a video um, screencast or something like that. Um, and that partial would then, you could set it from the different models and allow that local variable to, to work for it. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is take a look at concerns. So concerns allow you to use Ruby modules to repeat um, similar code and interfaces and include them in different models. So the example we just used would be one where you would want a, a concern. So let's say you had a polymorphic model commentable, you have blog post, um, podcast episode, video, and they, they all have a relationship with comments, you would go in and create a concern called commentable, and then you would include that commentable concern in all three of those models, because, rather than copying and pasting similar code for how you interact with comments to each of those. So that's the th next thing we're going to do here. And let me just take a look. So after looking at the concern section, it is fairly long and I don't want to tack it on to the end of this episode. So we'll, we'll commit what we have here in our, uh, for our refactoring. We've got our new comments partials here and then we've modified the show section. I'm going to run all tests here before I commit, make sure I didn't break any of the browser-driven tests, they're all working fine. So 
we'll add what we've got. So our show.html, we've removed a lot of code out of that, shortened that, and then we've got our new partials for comment.html.erb and form.html.erb. We have tests in place so that we're confident that our changes didn't break anything. And then we, we went in and um, tested it out in the application as well, um, doing some user acceptance testing and it all works as expected. So we'll commit this, pause and write my message. So we've got our commit message here, save that. Working directory is clean, push to the remote, and then we'll pick up with concerns in the next episode. Want to create your own Ruby gem but don't know where to start? Code along with me on the end-to-end -end journey of the Nerd Dice project. We'll configure and publish the gem, use GitHub Actions to trigger builds and tests, and create magic methods with Ruby metaprogramming that can roll any number of dice, all while using a test-driven approach. Go to statelesscode.com slash nerddicegem to level up. Thanks for watching this Stateless Codecast. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. You can follow us on social media at Stateless Code. Until next time, keep coding, and don't aggress against peaceful people or vote for others to do so on your behalf.